Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. In this video, we're gonna be installing what I think is the best thread repair kit on the market on the LQ4 six liter LS based engine in the 1965 GMC project. We've got a header bolt that's pulled out of the cylinder head. How are we gonna fix it? Let's check it out. It is all too common on the LS based engines to have broken off exhaust studs. I might've said that this pulled out, but actually what happened is a stud broke off in this engine, actually two of them. Now this engine in particular is out of a 2004 2500 HD pickup truck. And I know that for a fact because it was my dad's daily driver, but he bought brand new. As such, when exhaust studs broke off, it was kind of a more get it back on the road so I can keep working versus let's get it done exactly how it should be job. The stud that I have most commonly seen break off is the rear cylinder head bolt on the driver's side, of course, because it's the hardest to reach. I don't remember if it was us who did it or a repair shop that did it, but the stud got removed in this engine and it got drilled out to a larger size because the hole got egged out in the removal of the old stud. It's now a 3A16 and a pretty sloppy 3A16 at that. So when we were talking about the cast iron exhaust manifolds that would have been on this truck originally, they would be less sensitive to individual bolts causing warpage. The stainless steel headers we're talking about on this truck now, different story. As such, I need to be able to get even bolt tension across the entire exhaust header, meaning I need that threading repaired both to the proper size so it looks right and matches the other hardware in this build, and also so that it can properly be tensioned, torqued, tightened, whatever you wanna say. So in comes time certs. These are my opinion, the absolute best thread repair kit on the market. Do not call these a helicoil, but if you wanna think of it in terms of that, it's a similar concept. Instead of a wound wire for the threaded insert, these are a solid steel bushing. They're also available in a stainless steel as well. Being solid makes them significantly stronger. Theoretically, this should be the best repair that we can do on a situation like this. And honestly, even possibly an upgrade versus the original design. We'll talk about that later. Let's take a look at what comes in the kit that I got. I got the size M8 by 1.25 because that's what I need for these exhaust studs. Of course, these are size specific tools. In the kit is a proper size drill bit for the inserts we're going to be working with. There's also a counter bore tool. That's the additional step that you might come across versus something like a helicoil installation. The counter bore creates a shoulder step in there so that the bushing can seat down in flush with the head or whatever you're installing it into. In this case, we're installing it into a cylinder head. There's the properly sized tap for the situation you're working with. That tap is a specific size. That is not just something you're gonna pull out of your tap set for this installation. It is sized specifically for the inserts we're talking about. It's a different type of tap and threading. I'll put the name down here. It's not something I'm familiar with because it's four threaded inserts like this. It also comes with an installation tool for the inserts that we're working with. I'll talk about that more as we get into it. And then also comes with a handful of inserts in this little storage case setup. That's really pretty straightforward. We're gonna replace the original aluminum threads with steel bushing, repair them, and get this things to the point where I can actually bolt a header onto it securely. So let's get into doing it. Now I've been trying not to draw parallels to helicoils, but if you've ever installed one before, this is a pretty similar process with one additional step. There is one kind of pre-step, let's call it step zero. That is you need to measure the total depth of the hole you're installing the insert into to determine the proper length of insert for that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this one, get the total depth of it, then subtract quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter from that to tell me how long of an insert I need. In this specific case, my hole was just about 22 millimeters deep. So a 16.2 millimeter Insert was the closest match to that for my application. First step is the drill bit provided with the kit. Drill out the hole to the proper size needed. In this case, this hole was pretty hogged out, which at that point I was a little bit worried that it was not gonna work with this situation because the hole was so damaged. The folks at TimeCert do have what they call big certs, which are oversized bushings for situations where the hole is already egged out too much, but I was able to get away with it in this situation. After drilling comes the counterbore step. This is a step you're probably not used to with other applications. They provide a counterbore tool that is meant to go into the hole that you just drilled. It's perfectly sized for the situation. And you cut a shoulder into the opening of the hole so that the bushing has somewhere to rest into. Next up, it's time to tap the hole. This is 
really straightforward. We use that tap that I showed you earlier. It's specialized and assigned for this specific application and tap the hole. And of course, as always, remember to oil your taps. When I don't say that in videos, people pick me apart for it. I did have to use my own tap handle for the situation, but that's no big deal for me anyway. Now after tapping, of course, we've got chips in there and we've got oil in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out that hole so I'm ready to install the insert. A little blast of shop air to clean it out a little bit, then a shot of brake clean, followed by more shop air with a rag to go ahead and clean out that hole so I'm fresh and clean and ready. Now it's actually time to go ahead and install the insert into the hole. The installation tool that comes with this kit is basically just a threaded rod, but it is sized specifically for this application and it may have a little bit more to it. I'll discuss that as we go through here. I wanna go ahead and lubricate the threads on the tool and then put the bushing onto the tool. This way the threads on the actual tool can thread through the bushing smoothly. And just before I install the bushing into the hole, I put a dab of blue Loctite onto it. They say that using a thread locker, there's nothing wrong with it. It can only help, so why not? Quick side note, the why not of that, I guess, could be the argument that these are actually removable. So if you screw up the threads of the threaded insert, you could actually use a screw extractor and back out the insert and install a new one in place of the one you just took out. But if you use Loctite, that might be more difficult to do. That's the only reason I could see why not. I mean, in this specific case, I don't even know if it's gonna matter too much because it's an exhaust port. So the Loctite might not actually be that functional this close to an exhaust port. I don't know for sure, but I figured why not? It's not gonna hurt anything. Then it's as simple as just threading into the hole. The way that these work is as you thread the tool into the bushing, it will actually push down through the bottom of the actual insert. And what it does is it actually expands out the bottom of that to lock into the threads of the hole. And that is the installation of a time search. Now, obviously there are a few cons here. We need to have access to do this operation. If this engine was still in a pickup truck like it originally came in, it'd be so close to the firewall that most of these operations would be difficult, if not impossible. Now these are of course available in a range of sizes. I got the M8 by 1.25s for this specific application. And here comes the biggest con of all when it comes to time certs. You know, you can pick up a helicoil kit for what, 20 bucks at your local auto parts store. This kit that I used here is $85 off of Amazon right now. And that is of course just one size, M8 by 1.25, which I do deal with these LS engines a lot. So that's a common enough size for me to justify having this kit, but I only use it on that one specific size. If you wanna get a full on kit that has a range of sizes in it, it's hundreds of dollars. The price is all in the tooling, the additional bushings, getting new threaded inserts, that's not that expensive. I picked up the 16.2 millimeter ones that I used in this engine and this application for $15 off of Amazon. So obviously that's not the expense. The tooling is the expense. Now, obviously this is pricey, but you know, at the end of the day, I was able to confidently reinstall the headers on this truck, tighten them down. So I'm not gonna have to worry about leaks. And I just, I just did it. I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to think, oh, is that helicoil gonna pull out? I didn't have to worry about that. I tightened these things down, no problem in those holes. Yeah, I could have removed that cylinder head and welded the hole up, gotten the header or a gasket and used it as a guide to mark and redrill the hole to the original size and tap it again. But then I run into the chance of just welding going badly and creating air pockets and being back into the same situation that I'm in now. And that also means I had to remove the cylinder head to do that. Now it might've given me a chance to upgrade some parts in this engine, but that's beside the point. To me, the value here was that I was able to restore the threads here. I'm able to just bolt things onto this engine. Somebody else can work on this engine now and not have to know, oh, you gotta be careful tightening that one bolt. No, you don't have to do that anymore. It's just good to go. There will be links in the description down below. Look for the size that's gonna work for you. I linked to the one that I actually used in this video if that's what you're looking to do. Those are affiliate links. So if you use them, they don't cost you anything more, but I do get a little kickback for you using them, which helps me in the production of this content. Heck, I had to buy this $85 kit to make this video. So please consider using those affiliate links down below. You know, the folks at TimeCert aren't making any specific claims about strength of their design. And I can understand why, you know, it's gonna depend on the material that the insert is being installed into, cast aluminum versus forged aluminum. Like there's so many different things you could be using this in. 
And also the fact of, you know, if like this hole here that I installed the bushing into was a little egged out, I was worried the insert wasn't gonna work at all. So I'm 100% certain this is not as mechanically strong as if I had just drilled into a blank piece of aluminum and inserted this insert into it. That's obvious. But I've known of people to use these because they feel they are stronger than just using aluminum threads. A specific case I can think of, CB750, something I'm fond of. I've had in the past where cylinder studs actually pull out of the case of the engine when you're tightening down the nuts on the cylinder head. Has this happened and it is so terrible when that happens. These would be excellent. Probably the next time I do a CB750, I'll likely redo all of the cylinder studs with these inserts because the diameter of the bushing is larger than the diameter of the original threads in the aluminum, meaning you have more surface area contacting the aluminum, which should in theory be a stronger design. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Those are time certs. This is a simple topic, but honestly, these things are just so neat. I've been using these for years now and I've never had a kit of my own. I've always had them with the shops that I worked at. I'm finally starting to invest in just getting my own and doing it because while they're pricey, they're just the best. There's just no way around it. Hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this video? Are you gonna use time certs instead of helicoils? Are you gonna weld up holes? Let me know in the comments down below. Get subscribed to keep up to date with all the hot rod content. Thanks for coming around, folks.